County Fire from Squad 14. Squad 14 is on the scene of a two-story medium-sized residence with smoke showing from the second floor. Squad 14 stretching an attack line for primary search and fire control in the offensive strategy. Squad 14 will be command conducting a 360. That line. County Fire from command. We have a working fire on the second floor, Charlie's side. We're going to redirect our attack line to the Charlie's side for a quick hit. Three sixties complete. John Van Bruyne from the Penn Township Fire Department. I'm the chief here at Penn Township uh, here in Mishawaka, Indiana. Today we are uh, doing some live burns and uh, collaborative effort between Underwriters Laboratory as well as the State Fire Marshal's Office here in Indiana. I myself have been on the fire department for 38 years and seen a lot of changes. Hopefully these changes that we see out of this study today will help firefighters be safer, to be able to do your job, still do your searches in the right way, and we're hoping like that today will be a good day for us to help you in your fire firing efforts. It's a privilege for the Indiana State Fire Marshal's Office in partnership with Underwriters Laboratory and many St. Joe County, Indiana fire departments to participate in this research project to help firefighters understand more about fire behavior and the fire dynamics in today's world. The fire problem today has evolved from putting the wet stuff on the red stuff to understanding the science of fire dynamics. This project will help firefighters, chief officers, incident commanders make more informed and better decisions that impact their, our ability to put out the fire as well as to do it safely. The fire environment has changed and the way we have to do things have changed. Uh, there is nothing wrong with hitting it hard from the yard anymore. It used to be you'd get criticized for that because you're gonna push fire. That's not the case. By hitting it hard from the yard or resetting the fire or giving it a quick hit, whatever you want to call it, you're actually making the environment safer, not only for the firefighters, but also for the civilians still inside. You're, you're lowering the temperature, and I like to always put a football analogy behind it, is you're stopping the forward progress of the fire. You're not letting it grow anymore. You're, you're, you're giving it a punch that it can't recover from, at least very quickly. Um, the other thing is, with it is, is people think with this new science that we're never going to go inside anymore. You couldn't be more wrong. The new science says after you give it that punch, you, you still have to go inside. So we've uh, done those burns over the past couple days. We're looking at, uh, you know, whether it be a second floor fire, uh, hitting it from the outside, a first floor fire, a garage fire, a basement fire. We're looking at all those different tactics and seeing how they affect us. Um, UL is kind enough to be here with their laboratory equipment that gives us the actual temperature readings we're seeing inside. One of the things we're looking at here today and what the whole purpose of this entire video is, is the new fire service acronym SLICE RS. And SLICE RS is not a replacement for ReCOVS, but almost the, what we call the, the first engines um, mnemonic that they're going to want to go by. And SLICE RS stands for size up, which includes your 360. Locate, locate the uh, fire, um, isolate, isolate the flow path, cool, cool from a safe distance, extinguish, which means we still have to get in there. We only have a minute and a half to three minutes, rescue, and salvage. Slice RS is more the, the first company arrival, where Reseal VS is more that battalion chief managing the incident. Um, after the fact. So we, we have to really concentrate on that size up, which is the 360 that degree line. size up of the structure. We, we have to locate where that fire is during that, whether it's be using a thermal imaging camera or just seeing it blowing out in the back. Then the big thing now is isolate the flow path. Before, you know, we used to take windows or take oh, no, doors. No. It's not the case anymore. We have to isolate that flow path. We want that fire to remain ventilation limited. We don't want to give it extra air. 
we're going to cool it from a safe distance. Cooling from a safe distance does not mean we're not going inside. Sometimes the safe distance means we're inside. We're just not going to go into the fire room. We're going to re use the reach of our nozzle to cool from a safe distance. That that point, we're going to proceed in. We're going to extinguish, you know, overhaul the room. And like I said yeah. earlier, rescue and salvage fill, fit in where necessary. Just remember, though, if you put out the fire, the rest of your problems go away. So if you if you all you concentrate on is rescue when you get there and you forget about dealing with the fire, your problems are only going to get bigger. They're not going to get better. Um, so those are some of the things we're looking at here today. So then we'll do a bullet cam for the IR cam. Can we do one or can we do two? I can do four. Can do so these are the temperature sensors coming down. So that's where the different feet are. Yep. Yeah. So does this need to so stand this, up? Yeah, this goes underneath. It's uh, four different thermocouples, which are designed to measure uh, gas temperature. So we're uh, installing it so that we have a sensor at seven feet, five feet, three feet, and one foot above the floor, and it'll allow us to determine temperatures in the basement uh, throughout the fire. UL Underwriters Laboratories has a really strong history with the fire service. Uh, we started in the late 1800s uh, by our founder running fire calls with the Chicago Fire Department, understanding why fires were starting and, and spreading. Uh, fast forward to uh, about eight years ago, uh, UL really got into doing research grants to help improve firefighter knowledge. Uh, we've studied topics such as uh, basement fires, structural stability of engineered floor systems, uh, what's in smoke, horizontal ventilation, vertical ventilation, positive pressure ventilation, topics like attic fires, uh, where we've really been able to add some science to the fire service and make them smarter and in turn more effective. Okay, go ahead, uh, make Am I on? Traditionally, tactics have, have dictated that you uh, chock the front door open, go in through the front door, and go ahead and move in and attack that fire. Uh, what we're looking at here today is a combination of putting a, a quick hit on the fire from the exterior, transitioning to the front, making entry through the front door, and controlling that front door uh, so that the flow path is ahead of the attack crew uh, as opposed to going over top of and past the attack crew. So during these experiments, we were taking uh, temperature measurements in three different locations at four different elevations. So we were getting temperatures uh, at the ceiling, at the standing height, at the crawling height, and at the floor uh, throughout the fire room as well as the hallway that firefighters would be advancing through to get to the fire. Uh, the main reason for that was we were looking at uh, as the water was applied from the exterior, was any heat pushed into the path uh, opposite the fire. And uh, what we saw today was that that was not the case. The temperatures were dropped at the ceiling in excess of 600 degrees uh, and at the crawling height, a uh, couple hundred degrees. We've said in the fire service for decades and decades, and it's true that every fire is a little different and you can't stop learning. And Every research burn is a little different, and the more of them you come to, the more you learn. Um, and it, not only that, but when we're out here in the street like this, and when we have a host fire department, we can bring firefighters out here, and they can participate in the process and see what we're doing. This is not a bunch of scientists in lab coats running around the building, as we can demonstrate and see today. This is Steve Kerber and crew, who Steve is a firefighter. He's got as much time crawling hallways as just about any of us. And that firefighter combined with that research scientist uh, can do remarkable stuff for the fire service. And it's great when we can bring firefighters out here to participate in the process and watch it happen as it's happening. What we're doing here is, is extremely important because it really allows uh, the fire service to see temperatures real time, see the results of their actions, 
um, allow them to better understand fire behavior, let them better understand their tactics and the impact of their tactics, uh, ways that they couldn't in the past. Uh, so we bring the ability to, to make measurements so they can see what's going on on the inside. And as they go ahead and progress through their tactics, we're able to uh, quantify uh, what's happening there. And I think combining the research with the fire service with fire training, uh, we're increasing the knowledge of the firefighters and making them more effective and safer on the fire ground. Steve Kerber's a really handsome man. 